सो हेलो गायस वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेसन दैट इज डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स सो इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ एनिमल्स आर क्लासीफाइड हाउ प्लांट्स आर क्लासीफाइड एंड हाउ वेरियस ऑर्गेनिजम्स विद दर लिविंग और नॉन लिविंग आर क्लासीफाइड सो बिफोर द ग्रीक स्कॉलर एरिस्टोटल सो ही क्लासीफाइड ऑर्गेनिजम्स डिपेंडिंग अपॉन वेदर दे लिव ऑन वॉटर land and air but this classification was not enough to understand the organisms properly so next in the next period or the later coming people they classified organisms based upon cells eukaryotic and prokaryotic eukaryotic cell then further the classification got evolved and finally we divided based on five kingdoms that is monera protista mycota or fungi metaphyta that is plantae and metazoa that is animalia so this is fungi this is plantae this is animalia so we will see their subgroups and we will understand some of the kingdoms and let us know each of them further the classification is done by subgroups and some of the subgroups are kingdom phylum class order genus and species sorry so the phylum is in case of animals and division in case of plants okay now the first group is monera so in case of monera they don't have defined nucleus and the cell wall may be present or may not be present so they most of the organs sorry the organisms are unicellular and there is least that we find multicellular and they may be autotrophic or heterotrophic autotrophic means they prepare their own food heterotrophic means they depend on others for the food for some of the examples of monera are bacteria and blue green algae okay next is protista so protista most of the organisms are unicellular and eukaryotic so they have cilia cilia are like hair like projections which help in movement and other functions and flagella is like a whip like structure so cilia are many flagella is single so they can be also autotrophic or heterotrophic some of the examples are algae and dytums okay now most of the fungus are live in the protoplasm of the host body so they are parasites that means they are heterotrophic so they depend on others for the food and the cell wall is made up of strong sugars uh, which is named after chitin some of the examples are yeast and mushroom and some fungi also have the symbiotic association symbiotic association for example they live together example is lichen and these are pollution detectors more the lichen less the pollution the next is plantae so most of the plants are eukaryotic and they are multicellular and they are autotrophic so they prepare their food with the help of chlorophyll chlorophyll with the process of photosynthesis using sunlight okay we will see some of the other groups in detail in next session upcoming session next is animalia so animals are basically heterotrophic and they are multicellular without cell wall and some of their further subgroups we will study soon so that was the short explanation about five kingdoms now we will go in some detail and we will see about kingdom plantae so basically plant and kingdom plantae is differentiated depending upon the three main features so first if the they had well differentiated body parts or not second is whether 
they have special kind of tissues or based on the tissues they are differentiated or not third is based on the seeds okay and they can be angiosperms or gymnosperms or pteridophyta bryophyta or thallophytes mm -hmm. so the next is thallophytes so the body is not well differentiated and the most of the thallophytes are aquatic for example algae algae most of them are algae and other examples are spirogyra and eulothrix okay next is bryophytes so they are known as amphibians of plant kingdom and the body is divided into stem and leaf okay and example is moss other examples of funeria so next is pteridophytes so their body sorry huh, their body is differentiated as root stem and leaves and here in other two we do didn't have conduction of water tissues to conduct water and mineral salts but in this we have for example ferns next in case of reproductive organs in case of pteridophytes thallophytes and bryophytes they are inconspicuous and this is known as cryptogams that means the reproductive organs are hidden next is further the classification is divided based on the seeds whether the seeds are naked or they are closed and they are angiosperms and gymnosperms based on the explanation of seeds okay so the next is gymnosperms so word gymnosperms is derived from two greek words gymno that means naked and sperma means seed so when you combine these two words we get naked seeded plants that are gymnosperms so they are evergreen and woody plants example is pines next comes angiosperms so here similarly angio means covered and sperma means seeds that means the seeds of these plants are covered and most of the angiosperms are flowering plants and the seeds are derived from ovary which turn out to be fruits so further based on the classification of seeds they are cotyledons that means they, if the seed contains single cotyledon then it called monocot and when the seed contains two cotyledons it is called dicot plants okay so the next is kingdom animalia and it is also called the kingdom metazoa and here the most of the organisms are heterotrophic and multicellular and eukaryotic and they move from one place to another in higher groups but in lower groups they are stationary so first group is porifera so the name itself suggests that they are made up of pores which gives rise to canal system in the body and this helps in circulating the components or the minerals okay and they are non motile that means they are stationary and located at one place and the skin or the outer layer of skin is hard and most of the animals are marine or the organisms are marine for example sponges okay so the next is cylindrata and they live inside the water and the body is made up of cavity and differentiation and the, there are two types of cells one is on the outer lining of the body and one is on the inside of the body that is inner lining so there are two types of cells one is inside one and one is other type okay and most of the animals or organisms live in colonies example is corals while others are hydra the next group is platyhelminthes and their body design is complex compared to the other two groups and the body is bilaterally symmetrical bilaterally symmetrical consider our body it is bilaterally symmetrical that means we have symmetry on the opposite side and the body has three layers of cells the other two groups has two layers these have three layers and no true internal cavity that means the cavity is not true where the organs can be accommodated and these are called flatworms flatworms because most of the organisms are flat in nature and the organisms can be free living or parasitic the free living example is planarians and parasitic is liver fluke so the next group is nematoda and their body is also bilaterally symmetrical and three layers of cells so the three layers of cells is called triploblastic and their body is cylindrical the other part was flat here the body is cylindrical for example round worm and pin worm here most of the organisms are parasitic in nature next is annelida so here also the body is bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic and now we have found here true body cavity true body cavity means where the organs are 
differentiated and can be located in specific region and there is segmentation in here so example is earthworm so the next group is arthropoda and it is probably the largest group because it has a lot of organisms in it and here their body is also bilaterally symmetrical and segmented and they have open circulatory system that means the blood vessels there are no blood vessels for the specific propagation of blood and they have jointed legs the name itself suggests arthropod means jointed legs so they have jointed legs for example crab and scorpion so the next is mollusca and here also the body is bilaterally symmetrical with little segmentation and here also we have open circulatory system but the extra part is the kidney like organs are found here for excretion and they have foot to move around for example snails the next is echinodermata these are called spiny skinned organs and most of them are free living marine and their body is also three layer of cells that is triploblastic and coelomic cavity and the body is covered with calcium carbonate structure for the skin for example sea star so the next group is protocordata and here the body is also bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and has coelom now the interesting part of this group is they have notochord present and this notochord may be may not be present at all stages of life but at certain stage of life okay so and the nervous tissue so this notochord helps to separate nervous tissue from gut and gives place for muscles to attach for movement so because of notochord they are able to move from one place to another and most of the organisms are marine and example is herd mania now the next group is vertebrata and the this group is more evolved than the other groups and they have true vertebral column and internal skeleton they are also bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic coelom and segmented now the vertebrates have these following features for example they have notochord and dorsal nerve cord paired gill pouches and they are coelomates now this vertebrate group is further divided into six classes uh, those classes are pcs aves mammal reptilia and two others now the first group in vertebrata is cyclostomata so these animals are jawless vertebrates and their body is elongated which is in shape of eel like body and they have circular mouth slimy skin which is scaleless that means there is no scale there is no presence of scales on their body part and the example is hackfish now the next group in vertebrata is pcs now consider the example of a fish okay so the fish are mostly aquatic and there is a presence of scales on the body and they take oxygen which is present or the dissolved inside water with the help of gills and fish has tail and tail is used for movement they are cold blooded cold blooded means they can vary their body temperature according to the environment that means they can adjust with the environment and the heart is two chambered example is fish take any fish for example shark blue whale etc sorry blue whale is a mammal i guess so consider example of shark only now the next group of vertebrata is amphibia and these are different from pcs because the lack of scales on their body part now they have mucus gland in the skin and the heart is three chambered and the respiration is through gills or lungs take the example of frog when the frog is in larva state it takes uh, in oxygen with the help of gills and when it goes to the next stage with the help of lungs it respirates okay and they lay eggs example is frog now, the next group of vertebrata is reptilia and these are also cold blooded and they have scales on their body and they respire through lungs and their heart is three chambered they also lay eggs but they need not lay the eggs inside the water rather they can also they lay eggs on the land so example snake while one point i forgot to tell you in case of amphibians amphibians can live both on land and also on in water okay the now, now the next group in vertebrata is aves now in case of aves consider a bird any bird so they are warm blooded warm blooded means now they cannot change their body temperature with the external environment so they cannot adjust with the environment so they lay eggs bones are hollow bones are hollow because they need to fly right and the heart is of four chambered for example any bird the next group in vertebrata is mammalia or the mammals so they are also warm blooded with four chambered heart and 
here we have a special glands called memory glands in case of others we don't we do not find them in case of others and the skin is covered with hair and sweat and oil glands except platypus and echidna all give birth to young ones and these creatures lay eggs these are exceptions and that is all about kingdom animalia so if you like the video do like share and subscribe